If you only know Randy Newman from scoring numerous Disney and Pixar films, you're actually missing out on a lot of great music. This is a single from his first album, which is just called Randy Newman, or depending on where you look, Randy Newman creates something new under the sun. This is a song, I think it's going to rain today. And I think Barbara Streisand, of all people, covered this. Uh, didn't have a hit, but you know it was notable. It's an interesting song. The B-side is the Beehive State, which, think about it, I'll give you a second. What do you think the Beehive State is? It's actually Utah. So, uh, and he says that in the song, that's what it's about. So these labels, if they're looking weird to you, white labels with small hole, well, look at that. It's a 10 inch. Confused yet? Okay, now you're gonna get more confused. Look at the speed above the word speed series, 78. So here's what happened. Uh, Randy, back then, and for his first album, this is when Warner Brothers was very eclectic as a label. They would do anything crazy. If you read Stan Cornyn's book, Exploding, it tells you all about how nutty Warner Brothers uh, Records was in the 1960s as far as promotion and things. And it seemed to have worked. I mean, they were able to attract over Frank Zappa. Uh, they did a great job with Jimi Hendrix in the 1960s. Uh, they, had, they attracted the Beach Boys to make some of their last great albums. So uh, at the time... They were quite an eclectic and interesting label. Um, Neil Young, of course, signed with them uh, to the reprise, reprise, however you want to say it, <laughs> subsidiary. By the way, in Stan Cornyn's book, he insists that it should be pr pronounced reprise because Frank Sinatra started the label and wanted it to be like reprisal because he was trying to get back at Capitol and Columbia, his previous labels. Uh, however, I've heard reprise since then. The other day on Family Guy, when they had Frank Sinatra Jr. in a posthumous appearance, they said reprise. So I don't know which one's right, but anyhow, that's what Warner and reprise were. And as you can see, Warner and reprise, I've got the logos right there. Warner, if you see the little shmi at the top of the W, that's for Seven Arts, the Seven Arts company that Warner had uh, been bought by at the time. And in fact, soon after this, the whole thing would be bought by the Kinney Corporation, which at the time was into funeral parlors and parking lots and that sort of thing. But this was the late 60s and there was a lot of conglomeration, like IT&T and all these corporations trying to conglomerate, you know, CBS buying up Fender guitars and the Yankees. So the Kinney Corporation wanted to uh, become more diverse and so they decided to buy this record label. Not real, And they, they thought perhaps they'd paid too much and then they released the album of Woodstock and the film, which pretty much paid for the entire purchase, which when, they didn't even realize they owned the rights to it when they bought the company. So that worked out pretty good for everybody. And then a couple of years later, all of their uh, tri-state area investments in parking lots and funeral parlors and everything, there was some sort of nefariousness and possible ties to organized crime. So they spun that off into a different company and eventually sold it. And then this eventually became Time Warner uh, that we know today. And it eventually encompassed Atari and AOL and all sorts of companies. But getting back to this record, you see it says Speed Series. I will try and link below to the release that I found online. There's a press release saying what the Speed Series was, and it was supposed to be one that was experimental and fun and had better sound quality because it was a 78. And I will say that the sound quality of this on both sides is pretty phenomenal. Um, this, by the way, is clearly a remix. This is a different mix than what is on the album that we, what you would hear. Um, but the Speed Series release said this was going to be an ongoing thing, and that's what it was for. But it might have also been tongue-in-cheek and jokey, because that's how Warner Reprise was back then. Um, and sure enough, this is the only one I've ever been able to find in the Speed Series. You can see it's pretty thin because it's on vinyl. It's not on shellac like most 78s. So uh, this became an anomaly in Randy Newman's catalog, and it should be a lot more valuable than it is. It's pretty rare. And it's got, like I said, a remix of this great song, which I actually like better than the other side. But... Be that as it may, this is just an example of how crazy things were at Warner Brothers back then and how different Randy Newman was. Another song of his, which I'm not showing here, was there was a promo copy of Last Night I Had a Dream that came out right around this time, which is very heavy with fuzz guitar. It's great. Uh, and it's on one of the Nuggets box sets that came out in the last few years, one of the later ones. Um, but the promo 45 of that is impossible to find, and he re-recorded it in a much softer, smoother vein for the album uh, Sail Away in 72. So it's not at all a, a, the same recording or the same feel, but that's another anomaly from back then. One more is the song Gone Dead Train from the film Performance, and that's on the soundtrack album to that, and it's on a 45. So those are just four, well, <laughs> these are not that rare, but that's at least three, this, and uh, Last Night I Had a Dream, and Gone Dead Train, three, interesting tracks of his from the early days that are 
tougher to find. Um, and his first four or five albums are pretty excellent. There's the one that this came from. Randy Newman creates something under the sun. There is 12 songs and Sail Away and Good Old Boys, which are all excellent. Every single track on those is a killer. And then after that, he put out Little Criminals, which isn't bad, which has his one hit from that era, uh, Short People. That's not a bad album either. And his other albums have their moments too. They're not um, so bad, but uh, those first four or five are really great, and I highly recommend them.